it's one of the oldest, if not the oldest mountain ranges in the world. You know, we tend to think of areas like rainforest is like really high biodiversity or high number of species, but the Southern Appalachians is an area of incredibly high biodiversity for a bunch of species, including number one in the world for salamanders, number one in the world for freshwater fish, number one in the world for freshwater snails. Uh, if you expand that into the southeastern United States, we're one of the highest areas of turtle diversity. It's really incredible all the stuff we have in our backyards. But the Southern Appalachian region is definitely a salamander hotspot. It's got about a fifth of the world's diversity or about 20% of the world's diversity. So for every, you know, five salamander species in the world, there's one that lives here in the Southern Appalachians. Salamanders are a really diverse group. Those are in the group um, called Caudata, that's Latin for with tail. So those are amphibians with a tail. And they live in all kinds of different habitats. Like you see behind us here, they, there's woodland salamanders. There's salamanders that live completely on land. Their eggs develop completely on land. There's salamanders that are completely aquatic, that live only in streams and rivers or lakes. Uh, and there's salamanders that are kind of between the two. They have aquatic larvae, what we call the tadpole stage in frogs. Then the adults live on land or sometimes vice versa and sometimes salamanders like newts, uh, which are a type of salamander, actually uh, go back and forth. So the larvae live in water, uh, the juveniles go out into the land and into the forest and live for a few years. Then they come back as adults and uh, sort of regrow more aquatic features and live in, in uh, deeper aquatic environment, environments for the rest of their lives. One of the really cool things about salamanders in the southern Appalachians is that most of our diversity is in what's called the family plethodon today. Those are the lungless salamanders, so those are mostly terrestrial, although there are a lot that live in creeks. Like their name implies, lungless, they don't have lungs, they uh, breathe entirely through their skin. So they really depend on moist habitats, whether that's a creek or uh, under the leaf litter you see here, to be able to keep their skin moist and, and allow that oxygen to pass across their skin rather than across their lungs like you or I do. Even though salamanders are really small and don't weigh very much, they are a huge part of the biomass of the Southern Appalachian forest. In fact, in most of these habits, there's more biomass in salamanders than there are all the other vertebrates combined. So biomass is just a concept of how much kind of weight, if you will, is in an environment of any given species. And you can think about that in any environment, there's different types of biomass available. Like for example, we have tree biomass here that's that's really heavy and so you would say that there's a lot of tree biomass behind me but not a lot of grass biomass behind me. Where we're going with this for salamanders is that even though you might have a black bear walking through here that weighs 600 pounds there's more weight in salamanders than there are in bears. Salamanders are really important to the southern Appalachians and the environments they're in for a number of reasons. They're really important for the food chain, so a lot of things depend on them to eat. Losing those salamanders would be like losing grocery stores out of a city. Another thing that is sort of hard to understand or hard to grasp is the, the role that they play in helping us fight climate change. The big thing with climate change, right, is that there's too much carbon going into the atmosphere with burning fossil fuels and, and that sort of stuff. But there's carbon in all this life, right? Carbon is what makes up leaves and trees and salamanders. And there's an important part of carbon and carbon sequestration happens in our forests. If there were no salamanders, all these little invertebrates and little insects in the, in the soil and, and in the leaf litter would be breaking down all that carbon and releasing that. Instead, what happens is they eat a little bit and then the salamanders eat them. The salamanders go underground and essentially sequester that carbon or deposit that carbon. And so by having salamanders in the environment, we're not releasing as much carbon and therefore helping fight climate change. One of the problems that amphibians have is their habitat loss. So as we make roads and cities and, and that sort of stuff, they just simply lose habitat. And salamanders in general are particularly um, endangered by habitat loss because they, in a lot of cases, require two different types of habitat. So if you have a road that cuts off a wetland from a forest, you've completely eliminated both sides of that habitat. 
Salamanders and all amphibians are really great indicator species. Things can travel across their skin easily, which includes toxins, right? So when we see a lot of amphibians dying, it tells us that there's something not good going on here. It might take much larger doses to harm us, but it's still there. We still want to be aware of it. ARC does a lot, obviously, for amphibians. We try to do everything from helping the science and, and learning more about the species, learning what we need to do to help species, um, all the way down to on the ground conservation and trying to preserve habitats, trying to restore habitats and, and important populations for species. Many people don't know that you as a citizen of this country uh, have a big voice and you have a say in how our national forests, our national parks are managed, uh, what the Fish and Wildlife Service is doing for endangered species. It's really important in your backyard or uh, the forests that you go to, the parks that you go to, that you take care of that habitat as well. Whether that's um, leaving your leaves on the ground during the winter or leaving logs on the ground for habitat or taking care of our creeks and, and streams and, and ponds and that sort of stuff. And it's even as small as not stacking rocks in a stream. Those things have uh, a big impact on siltation and salamander homes and all those little actions add up to make a big impact across the country if we all do it.